So you was talking about the uh, the evolution of the name ADOS, uh, uh, how it how it started. You know, well, it started with a conversation between Antonio Boyd at Cornell and Dr. Kevin Cosby, W. Cosby of St. Stephen's Church. In Louisville. Here, here in Louisville. Here in Louisville. That conversation started here. Start, the conversation started. The conversation about the identity, what 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 they should be called in terms of this movement toward uh, reparations and. Um, and the designation, I think, was announced on by Antonio Montone Talk of ADOS, uh, American Descendants of Slavery. And it's important to uh, let everyone understand this. ADOS stood for, stands for American Descendants of Slavery, not American Descendants of Slaves, because saying ADOS, American Descendants of Slaves, is identifying people, or referencing people, individuals, but saying ADOS, uh, American Sense of Slavery, is emphasizing the system uh, that we have been abused by mm -hmm. and uh, for which we're trying to uh, identify for, uh, for the argument of reparations. Now, you said something else that it went from there. What was the journey? It went from, from, well, from the that, finish? Y Yes, uh, you're right. From that point, uh, oh, the, because of the, the designation of African Americans, uh, which uh, was a designation that uh, really didn't prove beneficial or profitable to us as a people anyway, but it was coined by Reverend Jesse Jackson, uh, I think during the time he was running for presidency of the United States. But uh, it was so like, it's like 84 or something like that. Right. It was around before right. then because we had right. Afro American, right but, yeah, but he, he, but he, he made, it popular. Yeah, made it popular. Jesse Jackson. Reverend Jackson coined the phrase, but it was important that uh, he be brought in on discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that dialogue could take place and, uh, and that designation could, could be met uh, and uh, uh, can be emphasized to him. And then to get his feedback on, on that designation. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he was brought here by Dr. Costa to be a part of the uh, uh, Angela Project. Uh, that we had uh, the time we had that, that was Angela Project 1.0 uh, when we were just trying to bring the discussion uh, to bear for uh, the discussion on reparations but it, to bring it to the forefront so, and then to get people uh, the masses of people uh, in education on the Angela Project of course the Angela Project being uh, the celebration of slavery in America uh, and of course, Angela being the first slave to uh, step foot on the American soil as a slave, uh, and uh, she was a school teacher from Africa, and so uh, that designation uh, derived from the, the history of all of that. Mm -hmm. And now that uh, we've had the discussion and the agreement on ADOS, it was only uh, proper. That, that designation would, that, that we lay claim to would have its uh, its flight, have its wings to spread throughout our community. When you say the agreement, what's the agreement between who and who? The agreement uh, was more or less the understanding. Uh, 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 the agreement is, is between all of those who would accept the designation. But the designation, the name in ADOS was a decision made by Antonio Moore and Beck Cornell. Uh, uh, that was their decision to give us the designation. It was our decision to accept it. Okay, now let me just get to say, uh, Antonio Moore sort of brought it up. Uh, Dr. Cosby and, and with other consultants, say from Jesse Jackson and other elders, sort of, you know, uh, I want to say improved it, but 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 heard it. And, and then uh, basically him and Yvette ran with it, but with the, I want I, I want to put it like weirdly like this like an el, and somehow an eldership was in there saying yeah I, I'm, you, you, you trying to get, I'm trying to get how this trying to wrap this around somehow would that be correct in saying that I think you're absolutely right and of course that uh, Reverend Jackson was considered to be a part of that eldership mm -hmm. which is why it was important to bring him in on that uh, discussion 
and to bring him here to have that discussion uh, and to get him to agree to it, which he did. Uh, he embraced it. Uh, it wasn't a problem for him to embrace the designation because just him, you know, he cares for the people. He knows what we're trying to do. He knows uh, he's him himself is a part of it. So uh, it, it was just only natural for him to accept the designation. And I think he agreed that the designation uh, had a more definitive uh, a meaning for ident identifying us as a people in this country. So if it was, I guess that one what we're trying to say, if it wasn't for Dr. Cosby's church from, from this institution, then perhaps this, I'm not saying it wouldn't happen, but up until that, up, right now we're talking hashtags or whatever have you, but an institution approved it or gave it a, gave it a, a space to be in. I'm, I'm well, there again, it wasn't it wasn't the church's it was not the church as an institution giving weight to the name ADOS. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, ADOS, the concept, the brainchild of ADS came from Antonio Moore and Yvette Cornell amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. They in turn uh, had a conversation with Dr. Cosby and about it and Dr. Cosby shared it with us, you know, here locally and through the Empire West meeting and uh, they were brought in and we had a, a very good uh, forum if you will, on, on the designation ADOS. And as far as I'm concerned, personally, as an individual, uh, I readily accepted it because it was clear to me that that's important for us to know, have that identity, uh, in, not just for uh, receiving reparations, benefiting from reparations, but to have that identity here in this country because uh, we, uh, we, we sometimes can get lost in this intersectional uh, community uh, where more emphasis is placed on people of color. And every time we get uh, pulled into that designation, people of color, then we get lost in the mix in terms of our identity. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we know who we are as a people. We know uh, from which we come, we know our contributions and we know uh, the debt that is owed us, which is different from when you classify us with people of color, because you had people who came here on their own. Uh, they were not brought here uh, beyond their will. It was their choice to come. Uh, so we're not indigenous servants. We're not uh, uh, just transplants from another country. Uh, we are descendants of the system that abused us and uh, that was systemic and remains systemic uh, to our future, our present and our future. Okay, thank you so much for this information. Um, well, how, how, what should we call you? <laughs> well, uh, you can call me uh, uh, Norman. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm Norman Sizemore, pastor, bond speaker, missionary Baptist church. I'm Jeannie's boy. That's Norma Jean Wilson, I mean, Norma Jean Sizemore's son. Um, so I'm, I'm my mother's son. I'm my, I'm, I'm, I'm Louisville. I'm a son of Louisville. I'm Park Hill, uh, raised in Park Hill, the community of Louisville. Practically all over, over. I, I claim East End, West End, Park Hill. California, Russell, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and Newburgh. I claim those communities. I lived in those communities. Mm -hmm. So uh, I am Louisville, born and raised. Uh, you know, I'm Kentucky bred, but uh, uh, so I'm also mainly a child of God. But uh, that's my passion. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. I'm a pastor. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much. Yes.